Welcome to Presume Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 8 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about what is this ease postback property all about. We'll also look at a real-time practical use of using this property. But before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 3, 6 and 7 of this video series. So what is this ease postback property? Is postback is actually a page level property that can be used to determine whether the page is being loaded in response to a client postback event or if it is being loaded and accessed for the first time. Let's understand what we mean by this with an example. Here I have a web form with a, with a button control on that. I double click that to have the event handler generated. Now look at this. When I go ahead and run this now, obviously we don't see anything you know, on the web form, just the button control. And when the web form first gets loaded, you know, this is the first time we are loading this web form. But when I click the button control, you know, we are loading it in response to a postback event, right? Now let's say on the page load, I want this message, you know, first time the page is loaded, okay? Page loaded for the first time. And I want this message to be appearing only when we request this web form for the first time. So let me run this again. So obviously when the web form is first loaded, okay, it will display that message. So we, we see that message. Now when I click the button, you know, it posts the page back to the server. So this is not, and then the page reloads. So this is not the first time the page is being loaded. But look at what's going to happen. This message is still displayed. And why is that happening? Because this page load event gets fired, you know, whether if, whether if you're accessing the web form for the first time or if you are accessing that in response to a postback event. Irrespective of that, it's going to execute this page load event. So within the page load event, you want to differentiate whether if it's a postback or the initial first get request. How do we do that? We can make use of the is postback property. And if you look at the definition, is postback is actually a page level property, meaning is postback is postback is defined as part of this web form class. Okay, so if I right click on the page class and when I say go to definition, you should see a property there is postback somewhere. And it's a Boolean property, meaning uh, it is going to return a true or false. So if I search for is postback, you should see that property. And if you look at that, it's a Boolean property which returns true or false. And it is defined in the page class. So it's a page level property. Okay, so I can use that property. And to use that property, since you are the, your web form is actually inheriting from the page, you get that access to that property. So you can either simply say if is postback, or you can prefix that with a page name. So page dot is postback. Okay, you can you can either do it that way or you can just say is postback. Now you're saying okay if page dot is postback if the page is you know if the request is a postback request then display this message. But we don't want to do that. We want to do we want to display this message if it's not a postback. So I can say if not is postback. And this page is optional here. Let's get rid of that just to be a little simpler. So now when we close this. And let's run the application once again. When the web form first loads, you should see that message. And then when I click this button, the message will not appear because it's a postback request. Is postback returns true. Negation of true is false, so it wouldn't get into this block. And that's why you know this message will not will not be shown. So is postback is a page level property that can be used to determine whether the page is being loaded in response to a client postback event or if it's being loaded and accessed for the first time. Okay, now let's look at a real time practical use of using this property. Now I have another web form here and I have already designed that and it's a very simple design. If you look at the, I mean, if you look at the form itself, I have a table within which I have, you know, TRs and TDs and you know, employee details form is the heading for this form. And then first name, a text box for that, last name, a text box for that city, and a drop-down list and register employee button. 
And if you look at the HTML, it's very simple to understand. So you have a table, and within the table you have TR and then a TD. And if you look at this, this TD is spanning across two columns. Um, what do we mean by that? Look at this. In every TR, we have two TDs here in the first name to display the label and the text box itself. But for the employee details form, we want that to span across both the TDs. So what we have done, instead of having two TDs, we have just one TD and we said the call span is equal to two, meaning this TD will span across two TDs. Okay, so that's the simple HTML there. And then if you look at the code behind, what we are doing, within the code behind, it's again a very simple code here. So, and we have that on the slide as well. So that's the this is the design of the form. Okay, and then on the page load, look at this, on the page load, I'm calling a function called load city dropdown list. And if you look at that function, what is this function doing? It's, it, it's having a very simple code there. We are creating an instance of list item object, and then we are passing in London to the constructor of that list item class, and then we are adding that list item object to the items collection of the dropdown list. Basically, what we are trying to do is, in the dropdown list, I want to display London, Sydney, and Mumbai. And drop-down list, if you look at that, we'll be talking about drop-down list in a great detail in later sessions. So don't worry about, you know, if you don't understand this code at the moment, because we'll be talking about drop-down list in, in, in a very great detail later. So, but drop-down list is a collection of list item objects, okay? So every item that you see in a drop-down list is actually an instance of a list item object. So if I want London, Sydney, and Mumbai to be displayed in the drop-down list, I need to create an instance of list item object and add it to the items collection of the drop-down list. And that's what we are doing here. Again, as I told you, don't worry if you don't understand this code. That's not the aim of this video session. The aim of this video session is basically to understand the real-time use of this is post back property. So all you can do right now is you can you can just think that there is a method called you know load city drop down list which will populate the drop down list that you can see on the web form with the names with the city names basically so what we are doing we are calling this function we are calling this function in the page load event and let's get rid of that code there so we are calling that function within the page load event so when the page gets loaded in the web server memory, these city names are added to the drop-down list. That's it. So let's run this and see what happens. So web form 2 should get loaded. And if you look at this, London City and Mumbai gets loaded as expected. But then look at what's going to happen when I click this button. When I click this button, look at this. The, the city names are duplicated. When I click that again, look at that. It gets duplicated. And if I click like 10, 20 times, what's going to happen? Every time you click that, the city names are duplicated. Now let's understand what, why is this happening? What's the cause for this to be duplicated? So the cause is very simple. We know that all ASP.NET Server controls retain their state across postback. So obviously, when we requested this web form, initially, what happened? You know the page load events get the page load event gets fired. It adds all these city names to this drop-down list on the web form, and then the response is sent back to the client. So on the client, we will be looking at. Let's close this. Let's run this again. So first time when we load, it shows the city names correctly. Okay. Now when I click this button, what's going to happen? We know that all these ASP.NET Server controls maintain their state across postback. So it's going to remember this drop-down list is going to remember all these cities in its collection. Okay. What it's doing with those city names is basically base64 encoding them, and then it will store them in that hidden underscore view state field, and then that is sent back with the request back to the server for processing. And at the server, you know. We know that there are several events that happen at the page level, page initialization, pre-init, load, etc. And we know that view state restoration happens during page initialization process. At that stage, from these base64 you know, encoded 
hidden field called underscore view state, the drop down list data is retrieved and then this control is populated. So during the page initialization, this drop down list on the server has already got one set of these city names. And what is happening during the page load? During the page load, we are again calling this method which is going to add another set of these three cities. So we get two sets on one post back. So when I click this button once, what's going to happen? You know, one set is duplicated two times. It's duplicated two times. Now, if I click the button once again, in the view state, you already have two sets of cities. And in the page load, you're going to add one more set. So obviously, it becomes three now. So that is the reason why we have these duplicated city names because of the view state maintaining its state. And then on the page load, you are again adding to it. So just to brief, we know that all ASP.NET Server controls retain their state across postback. These controls make use of view state. So the first time when the web form load, you know, the cities get correctly added to the drop-down list and sent back to the client. Now when the when when the client clicks the button control and the web form is posted back to the server for processing. During the page initialization, view state restoration happens during this stage. The city names are retrieved from the view state and added to the drop down list. And then page load event, which happens later in the life cycle of the web form. And during that load event, we are again adding another set of cities, hence the duplication. And how to solve this? Actually, there are several ways to solve this. And one of the best ways to do this is to use you know, the ease post back property as shown in the code here. So on the page load, call this method only if it is not a post back, meaning if it is the initial get request, only then load the city drop down list, call that method. So how do we solve it? Just say, if not is post back. And that should solve our problem. All right. So let's close this. Let's rerun the application. And the first time, as expected, it will show correctly the set of city names. OK, only once. Now I click the button once, twice, thrice, four times, no matter how many times you click, it will only show it once. Why? Because you're telling to load these city names only if it's not a post back. And that makes sense. And that's the best way to solve this problem. Obviously, there are other ways as well. Another way to solve this problem is to simply disable the view state of the drop-down list. And to disable the view state of the drop-down list, it's very simple. So because we know that the view state is causing the problem, because view state is remembering the previous set of city names. And in the page load, we were adding them again. That's why they were being duplicated. So if I disable the view state, view state will not remember them. And in the page load, I just keep adding them. OK, so I go to the properties of the drop down list and there is a property called enable view state. All we have to do, it, you know, is to turn that off. So false now. But before we do that, we also have to get rid of this property. Otherwise, it gets loaded only once anyways. So I'm putting it back to what it was. We are calling it every time on the page load. OK, so let's run that. So since we disabled the view state now, let's actually cancel this, reload once again. So since we disabled the view state, it loads correctly. And I click the button, no matter how many times you click, you go to the drop down list, it shows only once. Very good. The problem is solved. But since you disabled view state, you know there are there are slight problems with this approach. The first problem is obviously what is the purpose of the view state? The purpose of the view state is to remember the state of these controls across postback. So obviously, if you disable that view state, the controls are not going to remember their state. So obviously, look at this. I selected Mumbai, and when I select this button, look at this. It flips back to London. So obviously, it's not remembering its state. That's the first problem. And the second problem is, you remember, drop down list has a selected index changed event. So when I double click this, you know, drop down list selected changed, selected index changed event, event handler is generated. And all I'm doing here is writing a method called selected index changed. OK, so obviously, when we run this now, and when we change the selection of the drop down list, and when we submit the page back to the server for processing, it should execute that drop down list 
selected and exchanged event but look at what's gonna happen it doesn't execute that anymore because why if you remember control level you know controls basically have three types of events postback events cached events and validation events what are cached events drop down list selected and exchanged event by default is a cached event meaning it will be cached you know when you change selection and then upon postback that event will be fired but here since view state is disabled these cached events are no longer going to work as expected so obviously what are the problems drop down list does not remember your selection across post back if you disable the view state and another problem is the events may not work correctly as expected and we have seen that practically and another final way to solve this problem is to simply clear the drop down list items before calling this load city drop down list method in the page load event but this is not efficient from a performance perspective okay why because all the processing happens okay all you're doing is you're just deleting you know the items from the drop down list let's see what we mean by that actually so let's enable the view state back so enable view state turn turn that to true and get rid of this drop down list selection and in the html remove the event handler for the drop down list as well otherwise we will get a compiler error okay cool so now let's run that and reproduce the problem first so correctly shown I click the button and duplicate it alright so what is the last way of solving the problem you know when you're loading clear the items from the drop-down list and then call this method okay so view code so on the page load ddl city is the name of the control items dot clear so every time the page loads clear the items and then add them once again which is an unnecessary processing um, and from a performance standpoint it's not efficient so no matter how many times we click the button it loads only once alright that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day